Hello and welcome um, to my uh, perfect conling, uh, which is called. <sighs> so this conling is mostly based on well purring, as you may have inferred. So um, obviously, its phonemes and phones are basically just that. Um, so there are three phonemes with um, three letters that are N, Y, and A, which forms yeah by pure coincidence. These phonemes are obviously attached to some phones which are and for the N one, for um, the Y one, and for the A one. You can also do for when you catch your breath. So there are five suprasignatals technically, which are length. So there is a distinction between and there is the middle tone that is not indicated, it's just um, for example, there's the rising tone that goes something like that. There's the high tone that goes, for example, and there's the falling tone that goes. So the word order is SOV. Okay, I know it's pretty basic. I feel like it's not very um, edgy anymore to put like VSO or something. So, and adjectives can be placed pretty much anywhere unless you give a noun and stuff. For nouns, likeness is expressed through near repetition of the, of the noun using an indef marker, like an indefinite marker, for one of the two instances of the noun, and the other doesn't have an indefinite marker, which makes it definite by default. Yes, I know, definiteness is the default one. And for adjectives, um, because adjectives accord their definiteness uh, with regards to the noun, it's um, actually just going to be blatant repetition of the adjective. And there's also uh, syllable and stem structures. There's a muscle case, a syllabic consonant uh, as the nucleus. Uh, there's an occasional tone, and there's an occasional length thing, the uh, none. And that's basically the whole syllable structure, as you might have expected. And uh, stems have one or two syllables at best. And now, now classes. Um, they're not like male or female, they're positive and negative. Um, obviously, that's self-explanatory. Things that we deem as positive or positive, it's yeah, vice versa. So the markers you can put on a noun or a not marker, uh, which is pronounced. <laughs> um, and then uh, after that, you might have a definiteness marker, which might be none by default, uh, which is going to be definite, and it's going to be uh, indefinite if you put the marker, which is pronounced. <laughs> There is uh, adjectives uh, which are obviously uh, accorded with the nouns, so th the rest is still the same as for nouns, it's just that we have positive and negative, uh, that might be between the two. Uh, and for the two noun class markers, we have and we have and now for verb formation, so it's going to be a bit, well, actually much different from the other two. There's only like the not thing that we've already seen for this so far. Um, but there's also the semi-passive um, voice kind of thing, and it's not really a passive voice, that's why I call it semi-passive, but it's what most resembles that in English, so that's what I call it. Um, and it's notated with the marker. Then there's the pass and non-pass markers, which are... And... And there's also the infinitive marker, which is pronounced... Uh, Okay, and then after that, there might be first person, second person, or third person, obviously, uh, except there is no singular or dual or popular or plural or whatever, it's all the same. Um, so, the first person pronoun is pronounced, um, um, the second person pronoun is pronounced, the third person pronoun is pronounced, or something like that. So, now we can see a bunch of vocab. Uh, in the language, so there is a which just means happiness, it's obviously a positive noun. There is a which means both domination or plot. There's which means death, end, last one, next, kill, stuff like that. Um, mostly because it sounds like you're snapping someone's neck, basically. Like, you know, something like that. On the other hand, you have which sounds more like when you're hungry and your tummy rolls. I don't remember how you guys say that in English, but whatever, which is obviously the word for hunger. And then there's which means bird, mouse, or any type of food. 
obviously this one is a net positive, just like word domination. Then there is also which means pause, but also possibility more. It's actually stemmed that from it. Uh, so anything warlike or hostile, obviously war in hostility is obviously a net plus. Obviously. As for peace, it's obviously negative and it's pronounced. But then there is um. Well, that's obviously the word for breath, air, wind, and stuff like that. And then there is a uh, mecha, or weapon, or anything mechanical and stuff like that, which is pronounced which kind of sounds like when your mecha or your razor weapon uh, starts up. Well, you guys probably don't know what that sounds like, but whatever. Um, and finally, there is which has the possibility of being positive when it means space, but it's negative when it comes to movements, because we're a bit, I mean, they're a bit lazy. Gotta admit it. And um, here's basically the rest of the vocabulary. Um, yeah, there isn't a lot of words, but it's mostly things that we, I mean, cats care about. As for the rest, they don't care about it. Now let's hear an example, which is obviously going to be the Mashua copy pasta, obviously. <laughs> There you go. I hope you liked it. Or didn't. <laughs> <laughs>